Hello and welcome to another review from Colour with Claire. Today I'm reviewing Ecoline brush pens. Now you might have seen these on places like Pinterest and Instagram lately because a lot of people are using them for the modern calligraphy or brush lettering that you see quite a lot of nowadays and the reason for that is because these pens have an absolutely beautiful thick juicy brush nib on them and the actual pen itself it doesn't really look like anything special it's quite chunky feels a bit like um, a Crayola pen that you might have had as a child but the real draw for these pens is that brush nib and also the ink that's inside. Now I'll come on to that in a moment but just to show you the physicality of the pen we have the colour number here and on the back we also have a colour name as well, always good for charting your different colours and then obviously all the different bits and bobs of information that we usually find on pens. So very basic to look at really, but that ink inside is very special. Now it's not just your normal water-based ink, it's actually a liquid watercolour ink. So it's basically watercolour paint in pen form. So if you want to use these with water as they're meant to be to make a beautiful watercolour wash or you know a watercolour painting but use them with pens and water these are absolutely perfect they are liquid watercolour paint pens so what I'm going to do here is show you the pens themselves show you all the different colours there's a maximum of 30 available and that's the set that I have here but there are other smaller sets and singles available as well if you just want to try them out before you uh, go the whole hog so I'm just going to put these aside a second and we will move on to the colours themselves and I'll just zoom in so you can see it a little bit better. So first of all, this lettering at the top here, I did really quickly with a Spectrum Noir Artliner pen. And what I did was I just put a few different shades of ink inside the letters and then dotted on some beads of water and just watched them sort of merge together. And that's how I created this effect. This I did with the black um, Eco Line pen and it took me about 10 minutes just to write that word because I'm absolutely rubbish at modern calligraphy. But as you can see, lovely thick stroke goes down to a very 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 paper thin stroke as well so as you can see they're ideal for that lettering so what I'm going to do is I'm going to swatch out every single colour so you can see how they look um, how juicy they are how vivid the colours are in real time so we'll start off with this reddish brown and what I think I'll do is I think I'll colour half of this circle and then use water to drag out the colour so you can see how well that works as well so I'll quickly grab my water pen. You can use a paintbrush and water, this is just easier for me. We'll go into that just like it's um, from a paint pot and drag it out to fill up the circle. Now it might not be obvious on video, but these pens are extremely juicy. In fact, I would go as far to say that they are the juiciest pens, the most ink filled pens I've ever worked with. And you can really see that when you um, put the brush onto the paper because it just saturates that nib. The nib gets completely wet through. It, like I say, it's probably difficult to tell on camera. I'll try and do a bit more of a close up. But honestly, very juicy, very full of ink. So as you can see, we're just using water to spread the paint outwards. And it really does cover very well, great coverage. So, I mean, you could use these to make 3D forms like spheres um, and things like that. You could, you don't even have to use them with water. You could just colour with them as they normally are, you know, normal pens. They certainly have the vividity of colour to do that with. So here we've got Carmine, that one was scarlet. So Carmine's a bit of a pinkish red. Let's try and show you quickly how juicy these pens are up close. Let's get a piece of scrap paper. Where are we? Piece of scrap paper, never to be found. Okay. Let's just use this. So I'm going to do this really close up to camera so you can see and hopefully it will show just how much paint is actually loaded. Hopefully it's um, 
focusing on that but it's just so so juicy it just pulls right underneath the nib absolutely beautiful so this is a vermilion which is a sort of reddish orange as we all know and the harder you press with that nib the more color is going to come out onto the page So you often see this brush lettering being done with um, Tombows because they have that beautiful long brush as well. But I think the big draw with these pens is that they're premium um, ink inside, this watercolour paint rather than just a water-based dye. So you're actually getting the exact same paint effect as you would with paints in a pan. And just, just look how beautifully it spreads and covers. So that was deep orange. We now have burnt sienna. This one is light orange. And this is just the order that I've got them in the trays. And by the way, these trays aren't anything to do with these pens. They're actually Spectrum Noir uh, marker trays, but I just keep them in there because they're really handy to grab when I need them quickly. So this one here has a metallic gold top to it and it's called Deep Ochre. When you colour with it, even though it doesn't actually have any metallic particles in it, it is the closest thing you'll get to a gold colour in a water-based pen. So I'm not being very careful here. You can see I'm getting messier as it goes on. But hey ho, right, this one is yellow ochre. Very, very similar to the previous colour, but just a little bit browner, a little bit deeper. Now we have deep yellow, which is more, it's very, very orangey. So maybe if you were doing a pencil comparison, you might say it's a bit like the uh, sunburst yellow in the Prismacolor set, which is more orangey than it is yellow. The good thing about these pens, they do have a good range of yellows actually, and oranges. So this one here is light yellow, which is probably comparable to Maybe lemon yellow, maybe it's just a little bit too bright for lemon yellow. I'm just doing this demonstration just so you can see how easily they paint onto the page. This is actually called lemon yellow and it is definitely much more of a lemon. This is probably your canary yellow. When you put them together you can really see the difference. Next up, another yellow, but actually it's a yellow green, it's chartreuse. So this is that really sort of light olivey colour that's yellow mixed with green. So great selection of different yellows. The next one we have is simply green. Sometimes with sort of water-based pens or these types of pens, once you've put the original colour down and you try and go back in and wash over it with water, you'll find that it leaves a line wherever you've finished colouring with the pen. But these ones completely, 100% just melt, leaving no lines or any sort of distinction between where you put that pen and where you've put the water. So that shows really good quality as well. That was forest green. This one is deep green. So we're going more into blue, bluish tones now. This is a bit like a marine colour. And 
With these pens being so full of paint, you really don't need to use a lot to go a long way, which is also economical as well. Here we have turquoise blue. And then sky blue. Now obviously if you wanted to create more of a wash effect you would use less ink more water. This is quite sort of saturated with ink at the moment. This is ultramarine deep so let's just not put as much ink. It's really difficult because they're just so full of ink. Let's put a little bit less ink and see if we can get this uh, bit of a lighter gradation going on. Yeah. So you've got your dark going into your light. And you can just play around with it. And even when it's dry, you can go back in with water and it'll just reactivate. This one's an interesting color. This is Prussian blue. <coughs> And it's sort of like a denim, dark denim colour. It's quite difficult to explain, but it's a beautiful blue. Like I say, these pens, they really have a lot of decent mid-tones and vari variations in tone rather than usual colours, standard colours. This is ultramarine violet. Oh, so, so juicy. We then have blue-violet, a lot more purpley. Then we've got red-violet, which should be like a really pinky purple. Next up is magenta, a little bit more red than the previous colour. This is sepia, so it's sort of a really woody brown. have two greys. We have this warm grey. Which I always like to call elephant grey. It just reminds me of elephant skin for some reason. And this is the cold grey. So I always think that there's a bit of brown in warm grey and there's a bit of black in cold grey and that's the difference. We then have our beautiful deep black, which really is a dark true black. But you can of course make it into shades of grey using different amounts of water. Now the last pen is interesting, it's a blender pen. Now you do see these in sets of water-based pens sometimes, like Tombow's, but as this is a paint pen rather than water-based pen, um, I think it's really interesting to see how the blender works and what it does. So um, what I'll do is I'll just do a quick scribble. I haven't actually tested this yet, so bear with me. I'm gonna do a quick, uh, let's go with green and blue, because they sort of merge together quite easily. Let's go with uh, the sky blue and the forest green. Now just check out my hand, I've been using it to wipe my water brush between uh, colours, that's what I normally do. Um, <clears throat> so, we've got some of this gorgeous forest green, what a colour, and then beautiful sky blue. Let's get this blender pen out and see what it can do. So, straight away you can see that it just sort of melts the colour and you can get those variations of tone. What it's also doing is it's picking up the tooth of my paper so it is extremely wet. You've got to be careful with these cheaper colouring books 
that don't have particularly good paper because it will pick up the tooth. But I guess what you could do with that is just get some kitchen um, towel or some tissue paper and just blot that off. But this blender, as you can see, is just lightening the colour, blending them together. Maybe if you use a less toothy paper, I'm using a very thick watercolour stock. And it blends out to clear again, so it's not stained, you can use it again and again, so you don't have to worry about that. So yeah, maybe when it's dry we can sort of brush off these bits of tooth and it'll look better, but anyway, blender pens are not something I use very often. I prefer to blend by myself um, with the actual colours themselves. Not sure if that's possible with these. Let's just give it a quick go. It's really toothy paper. It's just, it's great in some respects and not in others. When you've got a wet media like this, it just goes muddy in the middle. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a quick sort of 3D circle. I'm gonna get the three different reds. And the one thing about this is I wish there was a bit of a truer red because the scarlet's pinky, the carmine's pinky, the vermilion's orangey, and this reddish brown is is brown. You know, it's it's, it's like a burgundy colour. So I do wish that there was a true red in this set. Maybe they'll bring it out later. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get. Hopefully you can see this. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to get the reddish brown. This is so so quick. By the way, I'm not taking my time at all. So. You'll do it much, much neater than me. Let's get the reddish brown like that. Then we'll get the scarlet. Then we'll get the carmine. Let's try that. So that looks fairly um, sort of liney and separate at the moment. Let's get some water on it see how it goes. So let's start off here with the lightest colour and work our way outwards, blending these together. So as you can see you've got the darker around this edge, you've got the highlight here which you can just keep brushing plain water on to make it a bit lighter and you have a sort of a sort of 3D sphere shape. You'll work a bit more on that than I will. But what I've just thought about with these um, this green and blue, let's actually blend it with water like it's supposed to be. <laughs> There's me trying to blend them together as, as one and with the blender. Let's try and blend them with water and see what happens. Okay. So yep, I'm on screen. Get some water in there. Great, so straight away they've just melted together and they've created this sort of mid colour between them. So, water really is the best medium to use with these, with them being paints, of course, if you want to get a good blended result. So, we've done our sphere, we've done our blends, we've done our colours. There's not really too much more I can tell you about these pens other than they are just absolutely just the most juicy, the most gorgeous pens to lay down on the paper. As you can see, they don't leave any streaks because you can just use the water to um, wash those streaks away. They're just amazing. I absolutely love them. They're probably now my favourite water-based pen um, of them all, even though they are actually watercolour paints, so bonus. Right, so you can get these pens um, in sets of 5, 10, 15, 20 and 30. They vary in price everywhere. I got mine from cultpens.com um, and the set of uh, 30 was around about £65. So they are a substantial purchase, but if you spend a lot of money on your colouring, if you invest a lot in the products and supplies that you use, they really are second to none, these pens. Um, especially if you're wanting to get into this modern calligraphy as well, because they do have that variation of line. They're very, very easy to use. The colours are really rich and deep. And yeah, so you can get them from all over the place, but I got mine from Cult Pens. Now, um, price-wise, if you're going for 
the smaller sets or if, even if you want a single pen just to try it out you're looking at around about two pounds fifty per pen so um, that's something that you might want to think about before you invest in the whole set just so you can try it out see how it works for you and yeah what I'm going to do quickly before I go is just do one of these blends here let's go with a blue and a pink so this is sort of a bit like a galaxy blend but uh, let's do a shape let's draw a shape let's just do a circle because I seem to be having circles all around lately let's do one here oh dear I'm literally the clumsiest least careful person ever so what I did here with this one I just dotted some colour around from each pen so as I say if you're wanting to make galaxy backgrounds with these sort of colours these pens are ideal so I'm going through at the moment filling in the white gaps you don't have to fill in all the white gaps because the water might do that for you but I'm just filling in um, it mostly then we get loads of water obviously be careful depends which type of paper you're using how much water it can take but we basically will start off with the lightest color which is the blue and just dot water quite a lot of water all over it and then the pink as well As you can see, by itself, it's merging and creating this sort of fuzzy edged blend all by itself. And when this is dry, as that is there, you can add some white dots with your gel pen and it will look like a beautiful galaxy. Now, with that still being wet, it's pretty hard to see that at the moment, but it will turn out absolutely beautifully. So loads of different things you can do with these pens. They're absolutely amazing. Gone on about them long enough now. Look in the description for all the links to buy. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Tell me what you think about these pens in the comments. Love to hear it. Do subscribe to the channel. That's my number one favorite thing for you to do. And my second number one favorite thing for you to do is click the thumbs up because that means that more people get to see my videos, which is always good. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon on Colour with Claire.